Okay, uh, here we are going to talk about um, filtering of a unit step function. Okay, using Simulink. So let's uh, bring up the Simulink library. And we will do File New for a model. Okay, let's rearrange our window here. Got our library up here. We got our uh, model down here. And let's start dragging some things over. Let's go to Simulink. Um, let's see, Sources. And what we'll do is we will bring in the unit step. All right. Now over here in the library browser, we'll go to syncs and we'll bring in our old friend plot. We'll connect those two guys up, run it, double click on scope, and there you have a unit step function. Notice the little time delay. Yeah, I think it's starting at about one second. Double click your unit step. And there, uh, I think the step time, yeah, that's telling it uh, that uh, you're going to start it at. Um, one second. Now you can change that if you like, but one second's fine. Now what we want to do is do some filtering on this. So let's come down back to the uh, library browser and get some commonly used blocks. Well, the one we seems like we always using is that mux. That way I can overlay plots. Okay. So let me delete the connection between the step and the scope. Let me connect that uh, mux to my um, scope, and there you go. And now what I'll do is I'll run that unit step into there. And uh, let's run it again. And notice the first uh, yellow is the first one. So what I could do here is I can type in the word uh, yellow. And then I can kind of drag that guy down there to indicate, okay, my first one is a yellow. All right, well, let's do some things here. Let's put a transfer function in there and, and look at the effect. Let me go up to continuous under Simulink. And if you scroll down there, you're going to see some transfer functions. All right. Now there's a 1 over s plus 1. Okay, that basically corresponds to that um, simple RC low pass filter. Okay. We'll run a pulse through a low pass filter and see what we get here. Okay, let's connect up the step. So now the step basically represents DC. You're putting DC through a low pass filter. Well, that capacitor is going to charge up and that DC is going to pass straight through when the capacitor charges up. Well, let's see if that uh, works. I don't know save it. All right, let's um, run it. And now, yeah, come over to our plot. Let's uh, zoom out and notice what we have. The yellow line is the unit step. The minute we apply that unit step, we're applying a DC, but it takes time for that capacitor to charge up. And then eventually the capacitor charges up, it opens circuits, and the DC that was present at the input passes straight through. There you go. 1 over S plus 1. The numerator would be equivalent to 1 over RC. This term 1 in the denominator would be our 1 over RC. And that would be our low pass filter. Okay. All right, let's do something else. Let's click on that guy. Let's do control C, control V. And I just copied and pasted it. Okay. Well, let's go to my mux and double click on that guy. Okay. Change that to three inputs. And let's make it a little bit bigger here. I'm going to drag it down to there. Okay. And let's see, yellow, we'll kind of bring that down to there. And let's see, what color is that? I think that's like, that's mauve, but let's call it purple because I'm not sure anybody knows what mauve is. <laughs> so the purple is there. Now let's see, uh, let's double click this transfer function down here and put an S in the numerator, all right, by doing one zero, okay? So if I um, change that, what I could do is I could say, uh, RC high pass filter, and I could come up to here, and I could say um, we do here RC low pass filter, and let's see what happens when we run a DC through a high pass filter. Well, a high pass filter only passes high frequencies. DC is like a, a frequency of zero, so we'd expect that DC to pass the low pass filter, but not get not pass the high pass filter. Well, let's see what happens here. Okay, it looks like uh, this one is cyan, so let's put uh, cyan there. I think that's cyan. Okay. So yellow is my original signal. Let's zoom out. Okay, there's my pulse. And then the purple, well, that's just the capacitor charging up. And then the cyan one is what happens when I run that through a high-pass filter. Well, the high-pass filter allows the edge to go through because edges are high frequencies. Okay, but then as soon as the input stabilizes, it says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, you're not a... You're not oscillating, you're a constant value. Okay, so I'm going to basically start to attenuate you, and you're going to eventually go to zero. And there you go. There's the output of the high-pass filter. Uh, the yellow is the step. The um, purple is a low-pass filter charging a capacitor. And then um, the high-pass, well, you get that charge in the capacitor, and then it bleeds off. And it drops to zero. Nice. Okay, so 
what about something else? Let's see what else would be fun to put in here. How about an integrator? Okay, now, an integrator is a low-pass filter. Okay? But it's a little different than the other, the low-pass filter up above, in that it has perfect memory. So let's run this guy up to here. And we'll run that down to here. Okay? Ideal integrator. Now well, let's go ahead and run that guy. Oops, look what happened there. Zoom out, and what we'll do is we'll say red. Okay, so the uh, integrator here is red. Well, look what's happening. Does that make sense? You put a DC in. Well, a DC is constant. What happens if you integrate a constant in the time domain? Well, if you integrate a constant and inspect the DT, you're going to get T. So the output's going to be T. It's going to be a linear function of time. Well, there you go. There's your red signal. It's a linear function of time. Now, is an integrator something you want here? Well, it looks like the output's going to blow up, basically, because you're just continually adding up the input. So, yeah, that, that would be an example of an unstable response. Okay? So, yeah, interesting. Integrator just uh, kind of gets a little bit too big. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put a little title up here. Call it the filtering um, unit step input. Okay, let's put another one in there. Let's make our window a little bit bigger and put another one in there. Let's see. Let's copy our high-pass filter. I'm going to say Control-C and then Control-V, and I'm going to copy my integrator. Control-C, Control-V. So now I am going to have an integrator going into a high-pass filter. Okay. And then I'm going to add one more component input on my MUX. Okay. And then I will connect that to the MUX. And then I will, let's see, scoot this over here so I can drive my integrator with the input signal. Now, what do you think is going to come out of an integrator going into a high-pass filter? Well, let's see. And looks like we get another signal, which is green. But we've kind of, we have our yellow, which is our step. All right, yellow is our step. Purple, well, well purple's gone. Where'd purple go? Well, we have cyan. Cyan's the high-pass filter. And then, uh, let's see, the last one is, um, no, let's see. Cyan, purple is right there, which I don't see. Okay, cyan is the, oops. How can I get that cyan? Yeah, cyan is there, which is the high-pass filter, okay? And then, um, and then let's see, the next one is red, which is the integrator. And then I've got green. Well, notice the green is exactly the same as the purple. The, the green is overriding the purple. We can't see it. Well, the purple is a low-pass filter. The green is an integrator and a high-pass filter. But multiply the integrator by the high-pass filter. What happens? Well, the S is cancel, and you still get one. You just get one over S. Well, that's what you had up here in terms of the low-pass filter. So here you've got two transfer functions. It shows the effect of, um, you know, maybe the transfer function you're trying to control was S over S plus one, and then you designed a controller that was an integrator to get rid of that zero at the origin because that caused you problems, and then you got a nice response. So that'd be an example of a simple open loop control by just putting in an integrator. All right. Okay, I think I am going to stop there. Um, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.